Heather O'Rourke terrified an entire generation, but her real-life story was much more devastating than anything in Poltergeist. The 1982 movie Poltergeist introduced many Gen X kids to the world of horror movies. The film's central conceit, that a mischievous supernatural entity could communicate with a child through a television and pull them into another world, gave every kid pause for thought. Poltergeist also made you believe that a tree outside your window could get you, or the toy clown in your room could be controlled by a demonic spirit. Much stands out about Toby Hooper's classic film, but one of the most integral parts of the story is that of the character Carol Ann Freeling, the little girl who is coveted by the scary spiritual entity in the family's home. Carol is played by Heather O'Rourke, who also starred in two more Poltergeist sequels. They're here. Of course, anyone who has been terrified by Poltergeist will also tell you that, at the end of the movie, Carol finds the strength to return to the light and her family. But in real life, O'Rourke did not get a happy ending. In 1988, six years after the release of the first Poltergeist movie, she died in unusual circumstances that led to her bereaved mother filing a lawsuit against the doctors who treated her. O'Rourke was only 12 years old when she passed. For much of her life, Heather O'Rourke's parents believed that she was a fit and healthy young girl like any other. However, on January 31, 1988, the actress suddenly became ill with flu symptoms. She had been filming the third Poltergeist movie at the time. In the previous year, doctors had told O'Rourke's parents that their daughter had Crohn's disease, which causes inflammation in the bowel, leading to pain, digestive issues, weight loss, and fatigue. This time, however, her symptoms became far worse. The following day, O'Rourke's extremities turned blue, and the actor collapsed before being rushed to the hospital, where her parents were told she had suffered cardiac arrest. Though she was resuscitated, and surgeons performed an operation on her bowel to fix what they then knew to be an obstruction, she was pronounced dead that afternoon. O'Rourke's manager told the Associated Press, she was completely healthy Saturday, they thought she had the flu on Sunday, and she was dead on Monday. Heather O'Rourke's death was deeply shocking to many of those who knew the child actor from her star turn in Poltergeist. In the months after, she became attached to an urban myth that claimed the existence of a so-called poltergeist curse, which resulted in the premature death of numerous people who worked on the horror blockbuster. The truth is, however, that O'Rourke's death was the result of a tragic misdiagnosis. According to Heather O'Rourke's death certificate, she died from a tragic combination of acute bowel obstruction, suspected septic shock, and cardiorespiratory arrest on February 1, 1988 just a few weeks after her 12th birthday. The Associated Press reported that, according to one doctor, her death was distinctly unusual. The issue that caused the bowel obstruction was believed to have been a birth defect. This same defect should have caused digestive difficulties throughout her life, including nausea, vomiting, and severe abdominal pain. But O'Rourke didn't regularly experience those symptoms. When she did finally begin to suffer problems, doctors misdiagnosed her with Crohn's disease. In May 1988, O'Rourke's mother filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Kaiser Foundation Hospital of San Diego and Southern California Permanente Medical Group. She blamed her daughter's doctors for the misdiagnosis and claimed that, had the birth defect been caught, it could have been treated with surgery, likely saving the girl's life. Kathleen O'Rourke, Heather's mother, told People magazine, it was an intestinal blockage that had probably been present since birth. The x-rays taken, if properly read, would have disclosed that this was the kind of condition that should have been treated surgically. O'Rourke's attorney explained that the suit was to cover both emotional and economic loss. A spokesperson from the hospital where O'Rourke received treatment said, We have reviewed the case extensively and we are convinced that the care we provided was appropriate. The lawsuit was later settled out of court. 